I think we need to talk about things, New Zealand. Why don't you have a seat? All right, New Zealand, what's up with us? We act like we're so great. We care about everything in the world. We've knocked COVID-19 right off the map and we've got Jacinda Ardern, for goodness sakes. So what's this I've woken up to, eh? New Zealand continues to support the legalisation of gay conversion therapy on the grounds of religious freedom. Okay, so we all know that I probably count as religious. Well, I'm Christian anyway, but what is a steaming crock of horse kaka? Do not, and I repeat, do not be using religion as a tool for bigotry and enablement. That is not what religion should be used for. But given that I'm probably already preaching to the choir here, I'm going to assume everyone is on the same page regarding entitled older men using religion as a tool to spread their BS with. Okay, so what's actually been going on? Does our Prime Minister Jacinda know about this? What are her opinions? So I did a bit of independent research, and yes, I will be linking all the articles referenced in the description of this video. According to the News Hub website, as of 21 10 2019, Jacinda has expressed that she, and I quote, wouldn't mind looking at the policy at some point. But then it goes on to say, she said the committee would be keeping in mind that there will be those who perceive that it is a part of their freedom of expression within their religion. Because, you know, spreading the word to people that they're going to be burning in hell for feelings and orientations they might already be quite fearful of and would get rid of if they had any choice about it, is totally a right that people should have. Again, I'd like to say that I'm not against religious freedom, not at all. By all means, pray and worship to whomever you feel like. But just as people have a right to engage in whatever religious practices they feel they identify as, so does everyone else have a right to also live their lives, not being traumatised over you and your religious freedom and identity. And when you have LGBTQIA representing children growing up at the complete and utter mercy of their parents, who may be quite religious and authoritarian, it can be very scary having this big powerful adult coming after you with no escape, simply because they're interpreting the way you naturally are as some sort of spite against them. There are people who are vulnerable and won't have any alternatives to escape from the mercy of their surroundings. There are legal adults who could still be manipulated and forced into attending therapy that they're not comfortable with. I've been near myself and currently have lost all contact with a friend because they've been sent off to some sort of conversion camp in another country. I don't even know what's going to happen to them until sometime next year. And let me tell you, it freaking hurts to have pieces of your soul ripped away from you like that. Whether it's being told you're wrong and you don't know how to fix yourself, or that someone in your life is coming down on you like a ton of bricks, trying to force you into something that you don't feel comfortable or safe in, to even losing friends that you can't save or rescue because they're in another country and there's no other alternatives. It sucks, man. It hurts in a pain that you never quite understand until you've been there and it's something no one should ever have to be there or go through. And it's legal. New Zealand, who claims to be a first world country and supports and respects the lives of our citizens, we're not exactly up to the mark in all areas regarding our own, about our most vulnerable and those who can't speak up. Whether it's about the abuse or historical mistreatment of our indigenous folks to people's mental health to those who cannot speak up, it's always, always exactly the same, every single time. It's all in the little things, the microaggressions, and in what we let slide because, oh, it's not that bad. And this is not directing hatred towards one specific person or leader in charge, but things have got to change. We can't just afford to be complacent about people's very lives. Think of America. Do you want to end up like them? So, if you're watching this and you want to know how you could go about creating change, consider speaking up, going forth. It costs nothing to go onto the New Zealand government's website and find the public email address of any such member of parliament. It costs even less to write out said emails voicing your concerns. People might have the best intentions at heart, but if they're not being reminded on exactly how important something really is, then how are they going to act out on it as soon as we'd like them to? Your voice counts, and if you care for something, you've got to speak up for it. And if you're not sure how best to word things, then share. 
share articles about what's going on, share YouTube videos, share direct quotes, let everyone else in your life know about it too. Because assuming everyone else is on the same page as you when it comes to knowledge or where things stand is a dangerous and breeds complacency and we were made to be better than this. And above all else people, please be kind.